I've got, I've got a couple of notes here because there's a few things that I need to make sure I, I touch on. Uh, I'm from, uh, Alan Pearson from Micron Technology. Um, we are a semiconductor manufacturing company. That's kind of why chipping is kind of a, in, in double quotes. I'll try not to make too many chip jokes. Initially, when I wrote the slides up, I actually had potato chips in there and all sorts of other things, but I'm saving everyone from that. So you guys got lucky. So here's kind of the overview of what we're looking at. Um, basically, how do we take a global semiconductor uh, company um, who has a lot of technical debt? Um, a lot of thick client applications. How do we turn them around to an API first strategy? Um, well, hey, this is the story about how we did that. It's our journey with, uh, uh, I like this, to API freedom uh, using the WSO2 API gateway. Some of the things that, uh, just so you know, uh, Micron is also involved, obviously, with a lot of memory. Um, you can see that we also have memory chips, SSDs, and, and uh, DRAM. A little bit about me. I started as an intern at Micron um, not too long ago, but <clears throat> I've, over 20 plus years I've, I've been there. Um, anybody know what a VAX machine is, VAX VMS? Hey, there we go. All right, well. The 11780 was my friend a long time ago. Um, worked my way through uh, different uh, uh, areas. And today I'm leading a, a number of different teams, including mobile, application and API development, process automation, uh, as well as, hey, cloud and on-prem, API gateway and the enterprise service bus. A little bit about Micron. I, I kind of touched on semiconductors, um, global semiconductors, uh, facilities throughout the world. I'm, I'll touch on a number of the, the different sites that we have uh, as, as we go along. Over 34,000 employees. And we've actually gone through and successfully implemented and kind of modernized um, the WSO2 API gateway. Um, Using, uh, we're using the gateway to modernize our monolithic client server applications. We have numerous applications out there. Um, we've actually successfully made it uh, through, I'd say, stage one. Uh, we have a long ways to go. There's a, a lot of applications out there. Um, and with those applications, there's a lot of technical debt. I kind of tried to equate you know, what is like a caveman, horse and buggy, and Micron developer? Well, they're all using pretty archaic tools right now. Um, we need to get them over the hump and start actually using uh, newer technologies. So stepping back, what was our goals of actually getting an API manager uh, in the door originally? Um, you can see the, the items up here. Um, definitely simple means for management. Uh, today we don't even, we didn't have that. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, DLLs that we've deployed throughout um, all the workstations out of Micron. As a side note, the way we deploy applications, we have 40,000 desktops out there. We actually push thick client applications out to all those desktops, and we get to manage all the DLLs and .NET libraries uh, and the issues that come with that. So we wanted to address that for sure. We wanted something for throttling capabilities. Um, today, and if we uh, wanted to do an enhancement to uh, uh, one of our DLLs, for example, I don't know who we're gonna impact. Um, but we definitely need to identify the owners uh, and the users of those APIs. Uptime's critical. We're a manufacturing company. We have to do 24 by 7 by 365. And we have to support all sites. Now, when I say all sites, I'm going to focus on uh, Micron has 
it's called front end and back end uh, processing. So our front end uh, uh, sites take the uh, the initial blank wafer and lay down all the uh, um, basically create the, the the chips onto the wafer. And then you'll hear me say if I say back end, that's where we take the process wafer, send it out, saw off all the chips, test and probe and package them. So um, our focus really is on our front end sites today. <clears throat> and we needed to really come up with how do we deploy standards, best practices, so we needed to put a team around that. One of the key things that is really difficult is, I kind of went back to Vax VMS. Well, a lot of the people that I grew up with are still there today uh, doing software development. And they're not used to, I mean, they're used to creating the .NET libraries and pushing them out in our old um, processes. Well, so it's a paradigm shift for them to start writing web services. Um, so I need to provide a solution for them to make it easy to design, develop, uh, put those web services out there, and provide a front end to manage them. <clears throat> so what do we get? Why did we choose it? Well, we have security wrapped around the APIs. Uh, we have charts, analytics, throttling I touched on, um, transformation and routing. I'll touch on that a little bit later, but it's really important as far as mediation policies. It's uh, something that our manufacturing developers uh, make heavy use of. Uh, obviously, it allows loose coupling. Uh, we had to go and assure that we trained our staff and our customers. We needed a low cost entry, which we got, which I think is, is key. Use of default for APIs, which uh, you'll, I'll talk about here in a second, because um, it goes with the, the next concept, which is we actually do use tenancies within our API uh, gateway. Um, my group puts out uh, standard APIs for the customers, and the customers for me are the software engineers at, at Micron themselves. So I create corporate libraries. We put them out there <coughs> for consumption by the software engineers, and we actually use default APIs so that we could always keep them on the tip version. So after selecting it, we decided that we need an on-prem deployment. That's what we've done. And now we're actually doing a rework of all our, our thick applications with the API-first approach. Definitely providing the, the uptime, as mentioned. That's uh, critical. Deployment today is at, actually, it was nine, but we just put a, 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 an API gateway in Xi'an, China, so now we're up to 10 gateways. We master the public publisher and the store out of Boise, Idaho, which is our corporate headquarters, and we use the version sync out to all the, uh, uh, these 10 sites. We use uh, GS, uh, global server load balancing, or the GSLB, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more detail on that because that's, that's kind of some of the fun, to assure that we are actually um, assuring uptime and um, failover capabilities. And once again, we do support multiple tendencies. We also use WOM updates and, and patches, and one of the things that we've done is we've actually uh, created puppet scripts to assure that we could... Uh, get consistency across all the sites. Um, WOM updates come out once a month, and if applying them takes quite a bit of time. Actually, if, if you look for our prod instances, we have 38 nodes out there. Um, we calculated it do, doing it manually versus uh, using Puppet, and each time we do a WOM update, we save 15 hours, basically. And I guess the more critical thing is the consistency and the fact that um, you we're taking out the, the possibility of human error. Um, we enable core APIs as web services, so that's what I touched on a little bit earlier. Today, my team supports the, uh, the concept of a 
of corporate libraries. So these are our standard libraries for maybe date time or is somebody part of, a, of an LDAP group. Um, so today I have to support Visual Studio 2003, Visual Studio 2010, Visual Studio 2017 libraries for all this, as well as Perl libraries that we've wrapped around this. Um, it's, it's horrible for me to actually support that. The nice thing now is web services. I could actually put them out there. And now it's language agnostic, and, and users could just hit the web services. And I'm going to get out of the business of actually having to uh, recreate the wheel every time a new version of Visual Studio comes out. What we did, we created a COE. So we go out. We're the evangelists. As, as a side note, Travis Lloyd is over here. He's part of my team. Um, evangelize. We, do do, we did dog and pony shows to get uh, people, uh, um, the development community, you know, understanding what the API gateway was, what it provided. Uh, we had hackathons. We did a secure text translation hackathon. Um, it was kind of this innovation initiative that we, that we had. Uh, the, the funny thing about it was uh, we provided an overview of the, of the API, uh, API gateway, or at least the store and the publisher, and then had our users go out and create a web service, put it out there, publish it, et cetera, using this API that I wanted people to, uh, to start to use, because it was a brand new API that we just created called the, uh, a secure text translator. That basically allows you to take, convert English to you know, French or whatever it may be. Uh, and one, one of the things that we actually uh, do allow in the secure text translation is um, you could use Klingon as a default language. So the cool thing is, is you go English to Klingon. And, and when I was given the, uh, the overview, I actually sh did that uh, during the, the uh, uh, the, the demo, and there was like two or three people that actually understood whatever I translated. <clears throat> um, we created getting started manuals, trained the trainer. Uh, we also, for my team uh, and a number of our customers, uh, meaning the, uh, the software development staff, uh, we had uh, additional training come in and I wanted to call out Yenlo because we actually did bring Yenlo in to provide training. What else did we do? We implemented this concept of a GSLB. It's kind of an ugly chart, but it, it explains a little bit about what we're doing to provide uptime around our 10 sites. So basically, for, for those of you aren't, that aren't familiar with the global server load balancer. It's basically uh, kind of a self-aware system that um, we could set up a, a, an alias. We have our, our end users send to this particular alias, the web API gateway.micron.com. So that's the endpoint that, that they go to. And no matter where they are in the world, they will hit the, the nearest uh, site, basically. Um, in this case, we have a site in Sing Singapore and a site in Boise. Well, if they're calling something out of, say, um, Taiwan, the GSLB should point them to our Singapore gateway and then route them correctly to the, the right endpoint. If for some reason Singapore gateway goes down, well, any API calls that, that are made will automatically fail over to the Boise gateway. So that adds the resiliency. Quite a bit of technology went into uh, to setting that up, but it does provide uh, the resiliency that we're looking for. We also created a, a number of uh, usage metrics. This is just kind of a, a graph of, of some of the uh, uh, different uh, tendencies, as you can see below, different tendencies that we have, and kind of different use, and, and who's actually using them. Um, my group is the app.infra 
tenancy, it's probably used about half the time. And then aptic manufacturing is obviously the other one that uh, is being used. Interesting thing about this is I went and I ran this, this graph. This is in-house developed, hitting the analytic server. And uh, for some reason, over the last four days, uh, I saw a little bit of a spike, actually a lot of bit of a spike. Um, it jumped up um, a million hits um, per day on our, on our, uh, um, on the APIs. Uh, we're still, well, we actually know who's doing it and we've actually tracked them down and that's one of the nice things. We could go ask them to politely not to uh, be hitting the server so hard. Uh, internal. So all of our um, customers are internal. It's, it's all internal to Micron. Um, we do not have external facing uh, API gateway yet. So some learning areas that we had. Um, we definitely needed to provide our customers the training. Um, and, and the appropriate tools to, to make it a, and support to make it a successful deployment, which I, I think we, done, we, we did. Uh, we have trained a trainer, as I mentioned, um, bringing Yenlo in helped as well and aligning with, uh, with WSO2. One of the things that I found that was actually a hurdle was internally, we support the whole WSO2 system. My, my team basically supports more of the, the software we talked about, like the WUM deployments. But we also work with service providers who actually own the, the uh, um, basically maintaining the hardware, doing patches of, of all that. I found that there was a disconnect and we didn't get uh, the, um, really the tight uh, um, integration that I was looking for. Uh, there was slow turnaround times um, because I had to go through another team in order to, to get uh, support. So basically I, I, I took it on to pretty much bring those guys into my team and now I own the whole uh, WSO2 environment from the hardware all the way through the software and the, de the deployment. Um, without providing security, access token, authorization, authentication training, you're not getting anywhere. That's probably our number one call that we get for support. We have a lot of, um, well, we use WSO2's, uh, uh, the publisher in the store. In the store, we have examples with numerous languages on how to actually um, get access tokens, all that. We still get called. So, it is, it's key that we have to get out there and, and make sure users understand how to use that. And then web services. Uh, as I said, it's, it's a paradigm shift for a lot of our developers, so it's important that we provide that training uh, for them. Implementing the GSLB, definitely uh, important for high availability, and, and actually we've had very high availability. I'd say, I don't know, a month or so ago, there was a misconfiguration in the GSLB, so we did see some odd routing uh, happening, but we were able to work with the GSLB team to, uh, to get that resolved. Uh, it just me meant that there was a little bit longer latency in the, in the API calls, but that was resolved. And, Puppet was, is huge as far as automation as well. That saved, uh, uh, I mean, when we're doing the, the WUM updates, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to uh, update a few config files and then push it out. Um, partnering with WSO2 has, has really helped out. Uh, I have another slide on some of the things that we've done with partnering with them. And then setting up and managing the, the tenancies has been, uh, has been really nice. Some of the things that we've actually done is we've written a number of different tools because uh, they don't exist today. For example, if I want to find 
a certain API, there's not a real easy way to span across all tenancies to find an API. So we've actually kind of written a layer over that that allows users to go and say, oh, I want something that does something with LDAP. Okay, it's in this tenancy. We also created a, an uh, API migration tool that allows us to go from dev test uh, production. So that helps more with CICD. Um, and we definitely had to, uh, we apply security around each of our, our tenancies. Manufacturing really locks theirs down. My app.in for a tenancy, I, I leave wide open because I want the, all users to be able to use those. And the other thing that I had to do was really go around and sell, sell, sell. I mean, uh, if, if it's doing site visits, visiting with all my customers, doing uh, on-site training, that's what we'll do to get a successful deployment. Things left to do, <clears throat> grow our documentation. I mean, that's, that's kind of an ongoing thing. Uh, continue the training, sell, sell, sell. Uh, we, we have that find an API tenancy. We actually have that complete. Uh, some of the things that, yeah, I actually just touched on that. Dev, test, prod, automated fashion to allow us to, uh, to do the kind of support DevOps, right? Since that's the other buzzword. <clears throat> uh, we're now creating a WUM test area because we actually have moved a WUM update out from dev to test. And actually, once we moved it to test, it actually broke some of our developers. It never made it to prod, but um, there was a, a, a backwards breaking um, change that was made that actually broke our, our developers. So we're actually creating a test area specific for testing even WUM updates. And we're also looking at WSO2 Cloud. Somebody just asked about, well, is everything internal? Yeah, today everything is, is on-prem and we only serve internal, but we're looking at external. So the cloud development investigation is underway. Dimitri's here. He, he knows about it. And one of the last things I wanted to say is that WSO2, they do, they do listen. Here's a, there's a couple items here that uh, they added as product enhancements or roadmap items, or actually they actually uh, added these enhancements uh, when we found them. <coughs> access control for an unlimited tier. So you could have access control for bronze or gold, but we weren't able to lock down um, unlimited. Now we can. So that was actually added. And then mediation extension. So our manufacturing folks use the mediators quite a bit. And one of the things that they were asking me is, well, it's nice. We clicked the button. We added a mediator. But how do I know when I go to update it what the mediator looks like? So now in the publisher UI, there is a button there where you can go in and see the, the, actually the, the mediation policy. Uh, I, I want to point out that we've had good quick turnaround on, our, on the tickets. Um, they've had numerous enhancement requests. And we've had on-site architecture reviews, which has been really helpful uh, for me being able to uh, drive the, the product forward. Oh, and with that, I guess, thank you. And are there any questions? Oh, there we go. Do you have 38 production nodes? Yes. How do you manage adding property registry properties? How do I manage adding? Adding registry properties or really configuring some of the Are you updating the public registry? Puppet. Yep. Yeah, everything is managed centrally out of Boise. We update once, push out globally. Logging. Monitor logging. <clears throat> Splunk. So uh, today we actually have Splunk logs on, on all of our production servers, and they're actually being rolled up into a single view in, in Boise. Um, there is noise in those logs, 
So we definitely have uh, created filters so that we uh, can filter out uh, a number of those things that uh, we don't want to see. And actually, we've tied that then into mailing or uh, paging us if, if we're finding something like a, a down note or something like that. Additionally, we do have other scripts that I know Travis is involved, involved with that that'll actually, I want to say every minute is testing every one of our endpoints uh, to assure that uh, everything is up and running. And I think actually that's, I don't know, half a million transactions a day or some ridiculous thing. But um, it, it assures the uptime. A minute 57 left. Last chance. All right, thanks everyone.